Hello everyone. In the previous lecture, I discussed about the production of radioisotopes by irradiating the targets with neutrons, and also we discussed how uh, the, you can produce the carrier-free radioisotopes by different means. In this particular part, I will discuss the radioisotope production using charged particles, and also some of the other aspects of radioisotope production like what are the ways, how the radioisotopes are handled after irradiation and in, particularly in Indian context, what are the mechanisms and processes by which the radioisotopes are produced and supplied to the regions. So in the charged particle irradiation, you can use a cyclotron or a linear accelerator or a tandem accelerator, tandem means two stage accelerator and then depending upon the irradiation time, the facility that is available to you, you can get the radioisotopes, you need the suitable beam and the target. So the knowledge of nuclear reaction will be very much useful in choosing what beam, what target. So if you, are, if you have a cyclotron and it is giving proton beam, then you already have the projectile fixed. So now you can fix a target and accordingly go for radioisotope production. Before you go for the radioisotope production, you need to know the excitation function. That means the cross section. Suppose this is the cross section sigma r versus energy of the projectile. Then this is the total cross section, and you will have the excitation functions of different products like alpha n, alpha 2n, alpha 3n, and so. So depending upon the excitation function for a particular radioisotope, so you can have to choose the energy of the projectile and also make sure that this is available from the machine that you are going to use. So these aspects we have already discussed in the previous lectures on nuclear reaction. Now we come to see what are the isotopes that can be produced using proton, deuteron and alpha particles. The heavy ions, you know, as projectiles can be used for rest of production, but you will find that the heavy ions are having multiple charges. So the currents are low, and you may produce many other isotopes which may not be useful. So mostly for commercial applications or applications in industry or healthcare, whatever radioisotopes are produced, they are either produced using protons or alpha particles, or deuterium, using cyclotrons because cyclotrons produce give rise to very high beam intensities. Beam intensity means current in microamperes. So one microampere of proton will have. 6.24 10 power 12 particles per second. Accordingly, one microampere of uh, you know, one microampere of alpha particles, suppose the alpha particle, one microampere current will have, this is a 2 plus charge state, 6.24 upon 2. That is how typical currents, uh, you know, some of the accelerators produce milliamp currents. Like for medical cyclotrons, you want very high activity of a short lived isotope, you go for milliamp current, 1 milliamp 10 power 15 alpha particles or protons per second. That is the kind of intensities you use. So proton induced reactions are used to produce fluorine 18, you can produce cadmium and indium 111 and F18 is used in PET, the positron emission tomography. Uh, so you this F18 is having only 109 minutes half-life, so about 2 hours and so you irradiate uh, H2O18, h 2 H2O18 and Pn to F18F and you have to do very quick chemistry because the half life is only 109 minutes. And you tag a glucose molecule, fluorodeoxy glucose, and the tag is F18, and then you can transport it to hospital for pet operations. This 111 also is used in the Analysis the diagnosis of diseases. The 111 Indian means beautiful gamma lines and 100 to 200 kg range. So it is also used in nucleotides. Again, another isotopes gallium 69 PN reaction, P2 and germanium 68. The germanium 68 has a half life of 270 days, which decays to gallium 68, which is a beta plus emitter and hence it's a PET radioisotope. 
any beta plus inhibitor being short lived are ideal for pet radiology pet uh, diagnosis positron emission tomograph so you can have a, a generator system germanium gallium generator system so because you, you you have to supply this gallium 68 to the hospitals so in the hospital you can have a germanium 68 column go on milking every few hours gallium 60 similarly helium 201 helium 201 is used in stress test right? single photon emission computer tomography irradiate helium 201 this is actually helium 203 not 1 p3n lead 201 and which is emitting the plus or electron capture give rise to helium 201 and this having half life of few days you can use it for spectral analysis camera scintigraphy camera 125 iodine 60 days is another isotope of iodine used in it means a low low energy gamma ray and it is used in radio immunoassay of iodine by thyroid um, hormones so iodine 127 p3n xenon 125 and 127 iodine you can also produce by 127 iodine target p5n xenon 123 going to 123 iodine so some of the isotopes of iodine 123 125 apart from 131 131 is a beta emitter and these are emitting electron capture and the x-rays and low energy gamma ray. so depending upon the type of application you have you can choose which isotope of iodine is suitable deuterium targets are used to produce sodium 22 and oxygen 15 sodium 22 is a positron emitter though it is not used in pet because it has got a half life of about a year or two so but it is a source for calibration so it emits 511 kV gamma rays. So if you want to calibrate your system and you can study chemistry of positronium, so positron is a positron source, and many chemistry of positronium atoms are done with sodium 22. In fact, there are sodium positron beams. You can take a source of sodium 22, which is emitting positron, and you can accelerate these positrons to use for many cases. Oxygen 15 is a beta emitter, and you can use this by for the PET analysis, a short-lived isotope produced by nitrogen 14 DN reaction. For alpha induced reaction, again 111 indium, technetium 95, plutonium 238, plutonium is a heat source. For the space applications, you know, in satellites, you can do want to use some power. See, typically, you know, uh, one, one watt, one watt of if you want to have one watt in heat, then about two. Uh, 2, gra two, two grams or 1 gram of plutonium 38 gives some 2 watts. So, typically, you know, that is the kind of uh, wattage you can get from plutonium at a heat source. So, you, these are the isotopes that are produced in using atlotrons. There will be there will be many, I am just giving you examples. There are more isotopes, in fact, we will come along to them and we'll discuss further. So, many, many radioisotopes which are not produced in radioisotopes reactors. And many isotopes which have different types of applications where you require carrier free, which may not be possible by reactor, so you go for axial approach. So, this is the list of cyclotron produced radioisotopes sodium 22, magnesium 24, D alpha, over 57, nickel 58, P2N, gallium 68. You can directly produce gallium 68. Or we can go for gallium 69 P2N reaction, indium 111, cadmium 112 P2N, iron 130, 123, tellurium or xenon as a target material, helium 201, helium 203 P3N, lead 201 followed by electron capture decay, carbon 11, nitrogen 13, and oxygen 15. These are all positron emitters, short lived ones you can see. 20 minutes, 9 minutes, and 122 seconds, and 109 minutes. They are all positron emitters. Some of, some of these isotopes are actually the cyclotron is coupled to the PET facility directly because half lives are very short. So these are the reactions used for producing these alpha the positron emitters, and they are widely used in PET the pharmacy. Palladium 103, 16 days. Again, rhodium 103 P to P and reaction. So you will find, you know, there are hundreds of radioisotopes have, having different applications. So what we can do, you can just suppose you want 
creation of a particular element. You want to trace the path of an element, take the nuclear chart, look for the isotope having suitable half-life, decay characteristics, and then see in what way you can produce a particular radioisotope. So having the knowledge of nuclear reactions, you should be in a position to find out a reaction which will give you the desired isotope with proper yield, particular activity, and you know whatever activity you need and particular chemical form also you should be able to do the chemistry and deliver it to the users. So let us compare the radioisotope production in a reactor and a cyclotron in with different attributes. You can see here in the case of a reactor, reactor is in a big sea of neutrons. So you can radiate large amount of target material like cobalt metal you can irradiate 10 20 grams even 100 grams you can irradiate but in a cyclotron where the beam is traveling beam first of all the beam dimensions are very small few millimeters so you cannot irradiate large quantity even if you irradiate larger pile it will not bombard that material only a very small section cross section of the target will be irradiated so small amount of target only can be irradiated in the cyclotron so cyclotron i am saying is representative of a accelerator but most of the time you will find the rest of production by charged particles is mostly done in cyclotrons so i'm just comparing reactor and cyclotron but this is also valid for any charged particle accelerator accordingly the specific activity is generally low in reactor neutron irradiation particularly you know when the target material is irradiated and become by n gamma reaction you get the isotope of the same element there have been cases like multiple neutron capture or multi this one beta decay then n gamma probably beta minus decay then you can get carrier free but in general if you irradiate a target material by n gamma you will get low specific activity. in cyclotron you are using a charged particle so you are changing the atomic number of it if you isotope compared to target and therefore you have very high specific activity of the produced isotopes Number of targets at a time in a reactor, you can irradiate large number of radioisotopes in the target materials. So at a time, many targets are being irradiated and you can just remove which one you want to remove depending upon the time of irradiation and their half lives. So you can irradiate many targets in the reactor. So throughput is very high, but in a cyclotron, at a time, only one target. We suppose you have multiple beam lines. At a time, the beam will go in a particular beam line. So there is no point putting irradiation in other beam lines at that point of time. So at a time, only one target irradiation. Irradiation time can be kept long, like I was telling cobalt, you know, you can irradiate for years today. Half life is 5.27 years, so you can irradiate for one year. In the case of accelerators, you cannot create irradiation. You cannot hold the react accelerator for one target production, so production exclusively so usually the irradiation time will be one day or few hours and so on and the beam time is very costly cyclotron operations are very costly type of decay of radioisotopes producing reactors mostly beta minus but in the case of cyclotron produced radioisotopes beta plus electron so they are neutron rich they are neutron deficient that is the only difference and the cost of production accordingly in the reactor cost supposing is low but in the accelerator portion is very high. So you have to weigh, you have to optimize the cost also. But if when you are delivering to for you know for industry, some applications or in hospitals, so you have so that you produced whatever the cost that will go into the final cost of the operation or test. All these factors are important to choose what is the method of. So you may get a low specific activity in the reactor, but it is cheaper. You want to go for high specific activity in cyclotron, you have to pay for it. That is how you have to assess the situation and plan. Now, many times, you know, there are many elements have multiple isotopes. And you want to produce a particular isotope by N gamma or charge particle, but there will be side reactions. Other isotopes also will interfere you then produce other activity which may not be required and so at that point of time you need to have enriched isotopes so if an element have got multiple isotope and you want to irradiate a particular arts isotope you need to get rid of the other which are not useful so enriched isotopes are required 
and isotope enrichment is a very expensive process. So that adds the cost to the whole production of the radioisotopes. They are expensive, but at many times they are innovative. You cannot afford to not have the enriched targets. So I am just giving you some examples. What are the situations in which you need the enriched targets? So there are situations where you where you want the radioisotope with high yield and high specific activity. For you know, the target atom should contain only radio radioactive elements. So that time you, you cannot have the other isotopes. You see, just to give an example. 112 India uh, tin N gamma 113 tin. So you want 113 tin, which is used in medicine. Now the abundance of 112 tin is only 1 percent. You can see here other is other isotopes of tin will also capture neutron or they, the volume say 99 percent of the tin is other isotopes. So if you produce 113 tin, bulk of the tin is still the natural tin and so the activity produced of 113 will be very small because 112 is only 1 percent. So what you do, you try to enrich 112 in the sample so that your specific activity will go up and your yield also will go up. Similarly, fluorine 18 that you want to produce for pet operations, oxygen 18 is very small percentage, 0.2 percent. Bulk of the oxygen is oxygen 16. So if you radiate now natural water, you will get you will get very small activity of F18 because oxygen 18 is very small abundance. So what you do? You irradiate, you enrich water in. So you have H2O18. And you can irradiate, you can enrich oxygen 18 up to more than 95%. See, so this is a low mass number. So it is easy to enrich the low mass elements. So this is these the, are the things you know you, you necessarily need to enrich the target element in the desired isotope. Second requirement is to minimize contamination from unwanted reactions. You are looking for a particular isotope, but there are other isot target isotopes which may give you unwanted activity, which is not desired. For example, 187 N gamma gives 188 rehenium. We want 188 rehenium for our application, but there is another reaction 185 rehenium N gamma 186 rehenium, which is not required. So you have one isotope three days, other isotope 17 hours. And abundance of 185 is 37 percent, 187 is 62 percent. So these are the two reactions concurrently happening. Your isotope of interest is actually 188 rehenium, which is used in therapeutic weapons. So you have to you know to, to obtain pure rehenium 188, you have to allow rehenium 186 to decay. But how you can allow it to decay? Rhenium 188 is short lived than 186 rhenium. So, it is not possible to allow 186 rhenium to decay. Therefore, what you do? You use enriched 187 rhenium. That is what I was telling that tungsten 188, if you have, you can produce by two neutron capture, that will give you 188 rhenium. And so, these problems are not there. So by N gamma root, if you produce 188 rhenium, it will be contaminated with 186, which is longer lived than 188. So that is that those situations you require necessarily enriched isotope. Similarly, again here also this it is similar to that radio nucleic purity means the, 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 the sample should be pure with regard to a particular radio isotope. And there can be parallel reactions, for example, you want to get 123 iodine, you irradiate genon 124 P2N, cesium 123, going to genon 123, and then by electron capture, it goes to iodine 123. But the abundance of genon 124 is only 0.095%. So, over if you irradiate natural genon, it has got very low abundance, and so you get very small activity. 126 genome also has got about same abundance as 124 genome and that also gives you by reaction, similar reaction 126 genome P2N reaction, 125 cesium, electron capture, electron capture 125 and so this is actually 60 days. 
So 125 iodine is, is longer lived than 123 iodine. And so it will always contaminate your spectrum. So if you have 123 iodine produced by xenon 124P2 and reaction, you will invariably have 125 iodine, which is longer lived. And therefore, there will be always contamination. Therefore, you need to enrich xenon 124 up to more than 99%. The gaseous isotopes are easy to enrich. Different methods are there available for isotope enrichment. And so, the enrichment of isotopes is a very common technology these days. And many vendors are available to supply you in these targets. There are situations where if you know, the target element may contain isotopes which have very high neutron absorption percent. So you want to produce one isotope of that element, but the other isotopes may have very high neutron absorption cross-section. So that will they will suppress the neutron flux in the position. So they act as neutron poisons. Means though the isotopes which have very high cross-section for neutron capture. They act as neutron poison. They, they will actually absorb the neutrons and reduce the flux. For example, you want 153 samarium for many medical applications. You irradiate 152 samarium N gamma and you get 153 samarium. Half life is about 46 hours. But if you see here, you have 149 samarium N gamma, 150 samarium. Though 150 samarium is stable, it will not give you any activity. But the very high cross section, 41,000 barn of samarium 149 N gamma, it will this high this high cross section will reduce the neutron flux. Most of the neutrons will be captured by the by 149 samarium, and so it will is like a neutron poison. So it will affect the neutron economy in that position, and your yield of 150 samarium will be less. So these are the reasons where you need to have enriched isotopes. There are other ways also where you can have radioisotopes. I have separated this class of uh, radioisotopes because they are, they are very handy in many applications. So I give you some of the generators. Radioisotope generators means you have a parent-daughter relationship. You have a long-lived parent and short-lived daughter. And you can, so you can put in a column or a, you know, a is here and you can milk B. So this is cow, cow, it's called cow, you milk the cow. So you, you can hold the parent isotope in the column and you can go on milking, as I discussed in the, in the Mulbenum 99 case. You can milk technician from Mulbenum generator. They are called radioisotope generators. And they are very popular these days because you can send the People who are manufacturing these uh, generators, they can sell the generators to the hospitals and hospitals have their own hospital radio pharmacy. They can go on milking the isotope of interest. So, molybdenum 99 is the parent of technetium 99M. Technetium 99M is the workhorse of nuclear medicine, particularly for the diagnostic radio pharmacy. So, expect single photon emission computer tomography. You are doing the image of an organ. You, you inject a labeled compound, compound labeled with technetium 99M, and then you need, when it is going in the bloodstream, the particularly organ where the blood is flowing, you can take the image of, like for example, heart imaging. You can see how what part of the heart is, if there is a, if there had been a heart attack, then what part of the heart is uh, infructuous, you can see in this one. So, 66 hours and 6 hours is ideal transient equilibrium. You can go on milking technetium from that. Another pair is gallium, germanium 68, gallium 68, it's a beta plus emitter. So for PET, radio pharmaceuticals, you can use this generator, 270 days and 68 minutes, 113 tin and indium 113. Indium 113 M is the radioisotope useful for diagnostic radio pharmaceuticals. And so you can milk it from 113 tin, having half life 115 days, and this is 99 minutes. This internal transition, you know, it emits not pure gamma emitter like technetium 99M. So they are ideal for imaging. Stonesium 90, 28 years, yttrium 90, 64 hours. 
And so this is again another pair where yttrium-90 is used in therapeutic radiopharmaceuticals. Tungsten-188 decaying to rhenium-188 which is used in therapeutic radiopharmaceuticals. And cesium-137, barium-137 used in the laboratory experiments for the gamma ray half-life determination and in many applications you will find. 137 cesium is also used in blood radiators. So these are another way of producing. Now I will just briefly discuss the some of the activities in India. In India, we have the in at Trombe campus we have the Cyrus reactor. That of course is not functioning now, but we have the Durva reactor, which is producing radioisotopes. And there is a sequence of events to radiate in the reactor, take it to the radiochemical laboratory, and then process them, send to other agencies for distribution in the country. So Inside the Dhruva, we have the reactor hall in Dhruva. Inside the reactor hall, these are the facilities for experiments, neutron scattering and other things. But inside the reactor, which is the calendria, reactor, inside the reactor, you will have the positions where you can load the sample, radiate them for a specific period of time, take out for processing. So these are from the irradiation, uh, after the radiation in the reactor, you bring them to the hot cells. Hot cells are, you know, these are the, this you can see the yellow color in the windows. These are lead glasses because the inside the hot cells, the radioastrophes of very large activity, few curies, hundreds of curies are being handled. And the person who are handling them should not get the radiation dose. So the, the viewing window is not pure glass, it is made of lead glass. So lead will attenuate the gamma ray, so the personnel are not getting much gamma dose. So that is why you can see by lead, in adding lead, some color will develop in the. And also the radiation, because of the radioactive sources, they also have the tendency to generate colors in the glass materials. So the viewing, to viewing window, and these are the master slave manipulators. You, you can manipulate them and and do the chemistry inside the hot cell. We have to open the can, do different chemistry, transfer from one port to other port. So all these operations are done in the sealed hot cells. This is a complete sequence of uh, uh, radioactive production. You have the targets, you can have powder, you can put them in the tube, and then seal in the, these are the cans, aluminum cans. You fill the powder into this one, and then you can put a cap, you can do welding, radiate in the reactor. You, this has to go quality check so that it does not leak. And then you, after this, you bring in the sealed casks in the, from the reactor, stainless steel or you know, pots, lead pots. Then you, they have to be transported to the processing laboratory where the people are now doing operations in the hot cell to separate the particular isotope of interest. They are then dispensed. You can bring it in the vials, properly capping them so that there is no leakage. There has to be a quality check. Many a times the sterility also has to be checked if it is in for direct injection to the human being. Then these are packed into the lead pots and then you have the package. You have to give the proper package so that people, people can identify what is the dose, what is the activity and all that. And then these, they are supplied to the hospitals by the agency. For the charge particle irradiation in our country, we have a medical cyclotron facility at Variable Energy Cyclotron Kolkata. It has been commissioned some time back. And the, this, this will give you proton beams of 30 MeV and then you can, you, you can produce these isotopes which are uh, positron, uh, positron emitters of electron capture emitting radioisotopes like gallium-67, helium-201, hydrogen-123, chlorine-80, gallium-68 by different types of reactions, P2N, P3N, PPN, PN, PN reactions. So I just discussed how they are produced in the previous discussion. And so like gallium-67 gallium soft tissue tumor imaging, the thallium-201 for myocardial perfusion imaging after you know, the stress test, 123 iodine for thyroid imaging, F18 for glucose metabolism, 
and gallium 68 for PET analysis of neuroendocrine tumors. So these are the kind of uh, activities are being produced at medical cyclotron. And in the country, there are several PET cyclotrons now available. The private hospitals have their PET cyclotrons, medical cyclotron PET isotopes. And particularly, F18 is produced in these cyclotrons. You have the 16 MeV proton beam bombarding H2O18, that gives you F18. And then there is an automated radiochemical processing unit wherein you know, within a few seconds or two minutes, you will get the compound labeled with the chloric acid. Then it can be directly sent to hospitals for treatment. So these are the kind of uh, facilities that are available for. So in our country, the Board of Radiations and Isotope Technology, it's called BRIT, is the agency to supply different radioisotopes or different kits, and they also supply do the services for industry in medicine, industry, medical industry, normal industry, and many other. Whoever wants radioisotope in the country. You will find radio pharmaceuticals, radio minute assay kits, if you want a labeled compounds, sealed sources, or even technology, radiographic camera, radio chemicals, dosimetry systems, all are supplied by BRIT. You can go to the website of the BRIT and see what are the products they are supplying. And for the larger uh, products, medical products, sterilization, processing, vulcanization of rubber, and many other, you know, radio, electron, this electron beam processing for insulation of cables. All uh, consultancy calibration of radioisotopes, all the facilities, services are provided by BRIT in the country. So you can go to their website and see what other things they do. So I'll stop here and uh, thank you very much for your attention. I hope you are getting a feel of what the radioisotopes can do and how you can produce them in our facilities. Thank you very much.